Well, hi everybody on Facebook Live. We're here at CityGate um, at uh, Main Point Women of Faith. Um, I'm just going to announce one more time uh, about our uh, women's um, retreat that we're going to have on September 28th. Uh, it's called Sweet Life Cafe. It's just a day for um, women to get together and not have to worry about taking care of your kids or housework or whatever and just get together with um, Sisters in Christ for the day. Um, it's $25. That includes breakfast, lunch, supplies that we'll be using. Um, it's not a day where we'll just sit and listen to one speaker the whole time. It's interactive. You get up and do things. We have a service project we'll do together. Um, so it's not, um, you know, it, it, you're up and doing things and you're hearing from different people. So um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. There's a sign-up sheet back there if you want to sign up here. Uh, or if you're on the live, um, you can either comment in the questions or reach out to me. Um, through messenger or something like that so um, it, it's a it's a fun day um, and I think you'll really enjoy connecting with people you might not know connecting more with God um, did I say it's called sweet life cafe mm -hmm. so there'll be some surprises um, throughout the day too um, but it's it's a really good time to to connect with God and other people so uh, we have space for 35 um, so it's first come or serve, I guess you say. So mm -hmm. um, let me know if you have any questions about that. So I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. Um, her name's Jody Fox. So you can come on up, Jody. I'll say a prayer. And then uh, when you're finished, just stay up here and I'll come back and we'll ask for if there's any comments or questions. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Father God, thank you so much for Jody and her willingness to share with us tonight. Um, I just pray that. You'll give her your words to speak. Um, I know she said she's used to speaking to children and not adults, but I said, well, just we're all little kids on the inside, so <laughs> in big bodies. So just be with her, calm any nerves she might have, um, and just speak through her and open our hearts and our ears for what you want us to learn about you tonight. And we give you the honor and the glory for what you've done in her life. Um, thank you for bringing her through. Um, some trying times I'm sure mm -hmm. she's going to talk about so we just give you the honor and the glory that you can change people's hearts you can change people's mm -hmm. lives you can change their circumstances and um, so thank you for her being obedient to your call uh, in different areas of her life I know that she's involved in ministry and everything so mm -hmm. just thank you for her heart uh, her obedience to you and um, just be with her as she speaks. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hi, everybody. Um, I am Jody Fox. Um, I like the theme that's been going around. He knows me by name. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He knew me before I was born. He thought about me. Wow. That's kind of mind-blowing. He thought about me before he formed me. Um, just a little background of me. Um, like I said, I'm used to sharing with children. I work at, uh, I volunteer in a children's ministry, Cross Bar Youth Ministries here in Africa. I've been with them almost 14 years. We work with the hurting children in the community, a lot of them. Um, I was one of those children myself, and I helped to raise grandchildren. I have raised a granddaughter since birth who came to me addicted, and she's gonna be 20 next month. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll start with me a little bit, a little background on me. Um, like many of us, I come from a very dysfunctional family. Um, my uncle was actually my father. My cousins were actually my half brothers and sisters. Um, I had a very traumatic, troubled childhood. I was in and out of foster care. I was in a ch uh, Catholic orphanage, St. Stanislaus, up in Anacote, Pennsylvania. I ran away from there in the, in the 70s, kind of like doing the Jesus Revolution. Well, I was one of them people. I was the hippie chick. Um, only I didn't go the way they all went. I went the other way. Um, I ran away from the orphanage I was in. I slid down, opened up a window, slid down a rain spout, and off I went. Um, 
I hopped on a Greyhound bus. And I ended up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They have um, Fort Bragg. They have Camp Lejeune, uh, the Marines. They have Hope, the Army Air Force Base. Um, I was eating sea rations. I was a teen runaway. I was eating sea rations from some of the Army guys. I was selling grass and vitamins for drugs when they would get paid. And uh, yeah, it was uh, really hard. I was washing up in bus stations and gas stations and everything. Um, but uh, I'm trying to like, keep it all together here. Yeah, I was hitchhiking one day and uh, I got in, back then everybody hitchhiked in the 70s. Um, I was hitchhiking one day and for some reason I had no fear. I got in the truck with these two guys. I told them to make a right, they make a left, and I looked to my right, and the barrel of a gun was down my throat. Um, they took me to an abandoned Air Force park and brutally raped me, pistol whipped me, pretty much left me for dead. At that point, I decided, well, foster care is better than this. So I went back to my foster home, which was in Paradise, Lancaster County, Paradise, Pennsylvania. Um, and I was in a foster home. There were seven, seven boys. I was the only girl uh, there. And I overheard my foster mother talking about how there's another mouth to pe feed and how my parents don't pay nothing for me or they get nothing, whatever. Well, I had missed my period. And I was pregnant. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And after I heard that phone conversation, I ran away again. I went back down to Fayetteville, North Carolina. As soon as I got off the bus, there was a pimp standing there waiting for a young girl like me. And somebody that was gonna love me, be my family, care about me, all that stuff. And it didn't take them long to turn me out in the streets. And I was, I was trafficked on the streets um, and I was terrified of him and I was pregnant to boot. Um, I went to, I was going to go have an abortion and back in 1974, it was kind of like right around the time with the Roe versus Wade type thing. And uh, um, I, went, I went to the abortion clinic and I don't know why, I never went through with it. All I know, I didn't know God at all. I just know that when I walked in the door, there was other women sitting around in recliners. They had their feet up in the air and they were all crying. And in my mind, they, the way the psychiatrist told me, like when somebody has something so traumatic happen to them, they just put up a block. You know, in my mind, I had what I called the mental abortion. So it, I, I had it, but he really didn't become real until he was actually born. Um, I was also introduced during this time to the needle. I was an IV drug user for about 25 years. Um, I would ride around looking for places that I could shoot up. I mean, I, there's places I pass here now that I'll, I remember when I went there looking for a place to shoot up or finding rocks on the ground and like just searching and digging through and looking for the rocks. Um, I just felt, I never felt like I had any value, that I had any worth. I didn't feel like nobody cared about me, nobody looked for me. I was just another statistic. But, so I spent decades until my mid 40s Deb, you know me a long time. You know how wild and crazy I used to get. And I spent, it was in my mid-40s, when I, that baby I had, I left, oh, by the way, I left him in a hospital in Washington, D.C. Um, because the pimp I was with, you know, he came in and got me, and I left my baby at the hospital. He was born two months premature. He had gangrene in his testings. He had all kinds of stuff. And I didn't know what to do, and I left my baby. I abandoned my baby in the hospital and left him. That was really hard to talk about right now. Um, but even as hard as all those things are, the beauty of it is, is like walking with the Lord, knowing who He is, knowing that 
he knows my name, that he values me, he cares about me. And it took me many, many years to overcome and to feel worthy. And I would say as recent as 20 years. I'm sick, going to be 67 in November. And I spent more than half my life in chains, in bondage, in prison, just in darkness. Um, so my husband, who it comes from a large Mennonite family, he was an alcoholic. And so when we got married, and he belonged to a motorcycle gang, so there was drugs and alcohol and all that good stuff. Well, 19, well, it'll be 20 years in August. We got a phone call from the Department of Children's down in Florida that our granddaughter was born, and she was born drug addicted. And they wanted me to go get her because they were going to put her out, they were going to put her into foster care if somebody didn't go get her. And I know, Deb, you probably could attest to this. A lot of people thought, who in the heck would give her a baby? You know, because I was still a mess. I was still kind of using, I was still drinking, I was still doing math I mean, in my 40s. And, but I said to my husband, if I go get her, I said, I will never step foot on that clubhouse and we're done. This is it. I'm done. And so I went and got her and she really was, as they say, the child should lead them. She was really like one to make me be a better mom, to care, to, to be there for her. Two months, well, right before she came to me, she came to me in August 2004. In 2004, Mother's Day weekend, that baby I left at the hospital found me. Oh, he found me, he looked for me for 10 years. And when he found me, the social worker, when they called me, when I got the phone call, they asked me if I wanted to talk to him. And I'll be honest, I didn't want to talk to him because I didn't want to tell him how he was created. And I did, he didn't have this big open, it's not like Oprah where, oh yeah, my own lost baby. It wasn't like, there was nothing like that. My whole family is so dysfunctional. The whole entire, I have no relationship with anybody on my mother's side. Um, but so he had found me, and I'll tell you what, that was a defining moment for me. Not one, but two, my son and then my granddaughter both came to me within four months at a time, and one day my granddaughter was so sick from, she went, was going through withdrawal. She was born drug addicted, really bad. And she was going through withdrawals, and uh, nothing I could give her, no formula, nothing would keep anything down. And my mother-in-law, who is an elderly Mennonite lady, you got to try goat milk. And I'm like, she's crazy. She's a witch doctor. Goat milk, really? And you know what? I was on my way to the goat farm with her one day, and it was raining. And on the way there, I saw this beautiful double rainbow. It was so beautiful, I had to stop yeah. the car, and I really felt that was God right there, like, okay, you got this, you're going to be okay. We had, um, we did have a brother-in-law who came to our house who, in good faith, because, like, we were a hot mess, both me and my husband, and, you know, they wanted to take Shayla and said that they knew somebody that could adopt her, and we were ter terribly offended because they were these true blue Christians and we thought, where's your faith in God, you know? But anyway, long story short, we sure showed them right now. So, um, yeah, it's just, I just been through so much and not only like with that, with the uncle and the, being my biological father, um, last year I got another, I did an ancestry DNA test found out I had another sister I didn't even know I knew, and we connected. Um, so it's just been like, my whole life, it's just been overcoming one thing after the other. Um, when I got my granddaughter, I promised my mother-in-law that I would raise her in church, thinking, oh, I'm just gonna make her happy, you know, just, yeah, mom, I'll do it. 
But you know what? I kept that promise. Um, I have an earth angel who's here with me tonight, Karen, to say hi. She has walked with me for 20 years through the darkest of dark, through everything. She has never given up on me. She has never, and I know sometimes that phone would ring and you would want to run from it. And, <laughs> but she has never given up on me and she has always encouraged me. She has shown me the true love of Christ. I am, in 20 years of my 67 years, for the past 20 years, two decades, I have been clean and I have been sober. And I have been wow. redeemed. I have worth, and I really do believe when people say, why would God make you go through it? Like, what, what kind of God? And you know what? I really believe if I want to went through all those things, I don't think I'd be walking with God today. Right. And on. I really do believe that. So, whenever somebody says, yeah, it sounds sad, and yeah, it's overwhelming, and yeah, it's like, yeah, it sucks that happened to me. But you know what? I I am so full of the Lord right now. I'm yes. so free. I'm so happy. I'm, I do a lot of volunteer work. I take meals to people. I I'm the first to volunteer for anything. So and my granddaughter, who I raised since birth, is uh, that was so drug addicted, needed extra help as as a child. She needed extra help in elementary school. Extra help. She was always needed. She now is in Lebanon Valley College pursuing her Bachelor of Science nursing degree. She's on the Dean's List, wow. and she's halfway through right now. Amen. That's so great. that is all about her. <laughs> Anybody has any questions, I happily answer them. I just hear God saying to tell you, you I'm nervous. Finish well. Huh? You will finish well. Yeah. Yeah. It was necessary to go that way. It yeah. had to be. From Thank the you. The that you're going to bring out that's coming behind you. Yeah. There's thousands of women yeah. just looking for you. Yeah, and you know, people look at me now, and if you, like you see me dressed up, and like my makeup, my hair, little haircut and stuff. If you would have seen me 20 years ago, you would have been like, whoa. I mean, I was the life of the party, the loud mouth. I was the crazy bartender. I was like, <laughs> so, and I was a junkie to boot. 25 years with a needle in my arm. He wasn't alone. No, 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 I know yeah. that. Yeah. But people look at me and they're like, dang, I just can't. <laughs> this is what God can do. Yeah. He, can he can put that glow on you and then take that darkness and put that light in you. Yeah. And it's joy. Yeah. It's so joy. Joyful, yeah. You know? yeah. And you have the peace. Yeah. You know? yeah. And my husband is also a recovering alcoholic drug yeah. addict. He's been sober four years. Amen. And he got baptized with my oldest grandson, what, four years? Two years ago, Karen, uh, her husband baptized us. So, oh, wow. yeah, Great. praise God. Yes. But we all, everybody needs an earth angel. I hope I can be somebody's earth angel. I'm sure someday. you are. Yeah. yeah. And you work with the kids at Crossfire. I work with the uh, hurting youth. So when they, when the kids come up to me, and like we do, uh, we do a hot meal for them every, well, three meals a week. We all, we have different churches that we all volunteer with that. We do a play time, we do a worship time, and then we do a prayer time. When we turn out the lights, the kids will come up to us, and some of their prayers, we just break your heart, what they ask for prayer for. And I know, I'll, I'll cry with them, because I'm like, I know how they feel. I was you. And so I can relate to them, I think that's why. And it has also helped me heal my own childhood yes. trauma. Right. And it also helped me raise my granddaughter in the right way. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so you're at the place God wants you to be, for sure. Yes. And Crossfire, they're in... Uh, yeah. 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 And Ashland. Yeah. Right. Up in the mountains. And they meet, like, don't they meet near Denver? We do. Wednesday yeah. night is elementary night. Thursday night yeah. is uh, middle school. And then Friday night is high school. Okay. Yeah, that's great. The one thing I kept hearing you say was, but 
but but I'm I'm so to say, <laughs> but God, well, yeah. so, you know, it's yeah. all these things, <laughs> but yeah. God, you know, steps in, and you know, he he protected you because you may not have made it through. That. Some of you here it made it easier for me to share because you've been there, so yeah. it was easier. It's really hard when I share in congregations of people. Right. Like if I, I was like. So it did make it, this is probably one of the first time, second time I shared with adults. Like well, you did a great so job. You have an amazing yeah. story, and yeah. Yeah. people need to hear it. So what, and if, and if it's too hard for you, but your son, did anything ever come out of that? Well, do you want to hear what came out of that? <laughs> a year ago, he called me up. And he said, hey, Jody, and we, we have a relationship. It's not a mother-son relationship because he was adopted. He goes, do you have a passport? And I'm like, no. He goes, well, you better get one. And I'm like, why? He goes, because I'm going to take you to Israel. Oh, oh wow. wow. So my first son took me to Israel last year. Oh, before this craziness. Oh, and it was like very, very emotional because not only am I with the baby I abandoned at the hospital, who was so sick himself, um, I'm walking for Jesus more too. Yeah, I like, know, I'm like, my I was a mess. I mean, I was, I, was just, I, I was like, it was just the whole thing was just so. Complete. And I'm a very emotional person. You know that, you know. So it was just like just blessing my, on blessing. Yeah, right? God's really blessed me a lot. Yeah. And like my husband's sober, my granddaughter's ha happy and healthy. Yeah. Despite uh, like her parents, like her her mother and father are both addicts. They're both out there. Our son is homeless. Um, in uh, Florida, we just wrote him a letter the other day. Um, it's it's hard. Yeah. You know, he just can't overcome her mother. We are a Jerry Springer family. <laughs> Here we go. Between, between that, the, between her biological mother and her biological father, her biological mother has four kids. The biological father has five. So my granddaughter actually has eight other siblings who are like halves. So it's it, and. Both the mother and father of my granddaughter are both in active addiction yet, and she's going to be 20. And I am no place to judge her because I was in my 40s when I, so I will never give up hope, ever, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. ever. Yeah, and it, yeah. Right. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Wow, I did, um, you used the word overcomer at one point that I jotted yes. down. You know, you overcame a lot. Yes. You know. Um, yeah. And he'll use your story, like yes. you already said. He definitely yeah. will. And and you give back. Yeah, you know, I think that's a big part of it. You know, you're giving back at Crossfire, and you're doing the thing at church. Yeah. Um, to to speak <laughs> into people's lives. Yeah. So. And I'm very active in my church, and uh, uh, yeah, I just it my transformation has was slow at first. But Karen, you tell me sometimes, like she knew the before and she knows now. When you see people genuinely transforming their lives, they are known by their fruit. That's yeah, all I can right. say. Sure you can do all the talk in the world, but until you actually do walk in, and for me, it took people years to, to notice, like, wow, you know, she's really, she's serious. Yeah. We have a friend, Deb and I have a mutual friend who has a heart a pump that keeps his heart beating. And every time he goes to the hospital, and we used to party till the cows came home. And I mean, we had blackouts. I mean, I have a whole decade I don't even remember, probably. And I mean, it was I was bad. But every time that he goes gets sent to the hospital, I need to, I don't have hardly any of my old friends because we know people, places, things, all that good stuff. But he's one, and he's like a brother to me. He will call me, and every time he calls me, his mother will call me too. They know I'm going to get my butt up there to the hospital and I'm going to pray for him. And I do. I did it just about a month ago. So, yeah. Yeah, people know. Like, yeah. they can tell. And you're walking in obedience and you're... I know. I thought... Yeah. I would never thought he'd be calling me to come in and pray for him at the hospital. I mean, it's just like when you think about where you've been and, and where you are and it's like how God just genuinely washes us white as snow. It's just amazing. Yeah. 
Uh, I can't even, I look back at my old life, I can't even believe it was me. Right, that's how I feel. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. And, and you said, like, your friend never gave up on you, but God never gave up on you. Yeah. You know, he never gives yeah. up on us. Isn't there a, I forget yeah. what song it is, but, yeah. you know, he never, he never gives, gives up. up. Never I think it's, up. um, yeah. oh, I can't think of the guy's name now, but um, you never gave up. Oh, it's Dolly Parton and, um. What's yeah, Zach Williams, Zach Williams yeah. and Dolly yeah. Parton? Yeah. You yeah. never gave up on me. You never yeah. gave up on me. He sings that in that song, yeah. and it's like that's right. Like he never gives up on us. But you know, know, I, it was it was actually somebody from the church because I used to be down on like do good or Christian people. You know, like oh they couldn't even imagine what what we what you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they couldn't even like fathom that. And it was actually the church people who said help save me. So, uh, you know, every, they, everybody has a testimony, whether you've been right. raised in church or whether you've exactly. been raised on the streets. It's like, if it wouldn't be for my church standing with me and helping me with these kids, like, mm. uh, there's three other grandchildren that I helped raise, too. In fact, when they were left homeless, my husband bought them a house to live in. So, uh, it's like... There's just so m I have so much that I could share, yeah. but that's just the gist of it. But yeah, you had the bad times, but now you can praise mm -hmm. him. You know, he got you through that, and so yeah. now you're giving him glory. Yeah. You know, for bringing you out absolutely. of the darkness. Yeah. And he brought you actually from death to life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You, know, um, you were dead, dead, dead person walking. I was. You know. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, we need to share our stories. That's why I always say, these guys get tired of hearing me say it, we need to share our stories. Yeah. Because my story is totally different than yours, yeah. but it will connect with somebody. Yes. You know? Um, but yeah. Anybody else? Comments? Yeah, Jody, did your did your son grow up in a Christian <coughs> home? It sounds like he did. He, he somewhat, yes. Um, he did have a mother and a father who loved him. And he's biracial. So back in the 70s, and they were a white couple, back in the 70s, that was like just, no, no. they did not want, they wanted him to go to a black couple. But if you saw him, he looks just like me. And you know, we got a lot of the same emotions and everything. He had a wonderful family, though. Well, and, and you had said that you hated to give him up, you know, that, that just broke your heart when you realized that you were giving him up. It was hard, like, leaving him at the hospital, but as a 15-year-old runaway who's being trafficked, who has the pimp standing there waiting for him, and not only that was he a pimp, he also just got out of Vietnam because back in, well, he was in the penitentiary. Back in the 70s, when you were in the penitentiary, if you want the front lines of NAM, they, they let you out. If you made it, you made it. And he made it. And when I got, finally got away with him, it wasn't even six months that uh, he had another girl. And he stabbed her so many times she was unrecognized. Oh, oh, and he actually died in prison. Oh, my word. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, could have been you. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes, you know, we feel here in Lancaster County, we're so sheltered, you know, by whatever, I don't know. Yeah. We're not as sheltered as we used to be, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. No. Yeah, I mean, this, this stuff is real, and people, yeah. you know, live through it, and uh, some of them don't, um, but, but God, yeah. you know, and thankfully, yeah. you're here. And yeah. transformed. Yes. And he did an amazing. And it's all him. Yeah. All the glory goes to him. Yeah. Everybody right. of it. Yeah. And, uh, anyone yeah. else? Questions or comments? Encouragements? Yeah. You did a great it's job. Your, <laughs> your story is amazing. Yeah. Keep yeah. it up. Share, 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 share. Yeah. That's what he, God wants us to do. No, you made it a little easier for me when you got up here and shared it and you. Like, you know, <laughs> in front of the Potter House, you've been there, done that, you can yeah. relate to what I'm um, talking about, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And, you know, and, and God has a plan and purpose in our pain. She yeah. taught us this. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, when I first, you know, found the Lord years and years ago, I really just thought he was just a mean individual. Yeah. You know? But now he's just like my best friend. Like, yeah. And, you know, some people are like, you're weird, and it's okay. I well, don't care. 
I'm a Jesus freak. I am too. So Jesus it's okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a process. Like some yeah. people, some people have a change of heart right away. But I think for most of us, it's it was a process. A pro it was a process. Time. Yeah, I mean, and it takes time. Years. And thankfully, we have people who will come beside us and, you know, yeah. encourage and direct and yeah. pray for and, yeah. you know, uh, you know, thank God for people like that who don't get, they don't yeah. get any credit here, yeah. maybe, because yeah. people don't see what they do, but yeah. God sees, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, yeah, so, you know, if you feel like you didn't really have that bad of a past, um, praise God, you know, and yeah. then go help somebody else, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, because yeah. some people need a stable person to walk beside them and disciple them and, you know, mm -hmm. But uh, everybody has value and everybody right. has worth. It doesn't matter who you are, what your past, yeah. whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, God still loves us all. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. Yeah, and you talked about, you know, he knows my name. We've been talking about that a little bit before the live came on. And he does. Yeah. You know, and, and he sees you, whoever you are, you know, he yeah. sees you. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it feels like maybe people don't yeah. you know and that was part of my story yeah that I never felt seen or heard as a child so food was my drug uh -huh. you know and it also was an eating disorder mm -hmm. um, uh, turn, turned into that kind of wow. um, but God showed me straight out <laughs> in an amazing way what my problem was yeah. and and uh, he took me to that scripture about Hagar you know where God you know God says, I see you. Yeah. Um, and so that means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, because no matter what our background is, there's there's things that happen that we feel unseen or we feel yeah. unheard and uh, or we feel overlooked or, yeah. or whatever it is. But we can't let ourselves stay in that state, you know. Um, we have yeah. to work to get out of that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You can't let yeah. You know, just don't play the victim. Okay, yeah. me. You know, yeah. do something. Oh, about I it. used to. I used to do that, but not anymore. I mean, yeah. for twenty years, I've been like, yeah. But I used to. Oh, I had the worst child. I had the worst parents. I had the. You know, and I. Yeah, I did play that. Yeah, you can get sucked yeah, in. Yeah, you can get sucked in, and I did. Mm -hmm. You know, but not anymore. So yeah. well, it's all Praise good. Yeah. And I, I'm proud to be who I am today. Yeah. Go ahead, Karen. Um, and your mother and your God restored. Oh, yeah, and let's get back to that, too. Yeah, my mother, like, my mother and I, my mother was like the town, whatever, you know, just man after man after man after man. And when my, when I gave birth to my son, back then you had to collect phone calls. She went and collect the phone call pretty much late in your bed. They didn't look for me when I ran away. She was just too busy with all her men. Um, my mother and I, um, it's been what about 20 years for her too. Um, we our relationship was restored. My mother became a Christian, wow. and for the past 20 years, I had the best mama in Go the world. On. Amen. Wow. I, she was amazing. She was a wonderful granddaughter to Shayla, and I told her that one time when when I. When I told her, well, first of all, I had my sister cousin come to me, maybe in ECC. I'm in Wises in Ephrata, and she's like, I haven't seen her for like 30 years or so. She goes, Jody. And I'm like, yeah, Kathy. <laughs> she's my cousin. She goes, do you know I'm your sister? I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my word. Remember that, Karen? I came to church. Just I'm like, like in the middle of the grocery store? Yes. And my daughter, she was with me. My grand, I call her my daughter. She's with me. And she goes, Mom, who was that? I'm like, that's my cousin. Well, she said she's your sister. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So I call my mom, and I'm like, Lucy, that's I'm explaining to them. And she did not want nothing to do with that. She she what, did not want to talk about it, and mm -hmm. she hung up the phone. I don't know why they're doing this, and blah blah blah. And two days later, she called me, and she was crying so bad, so hard, and I knew what she was crying for, and I I just gave her all the grace in the world. I said, you know what, mom, you don't have to say it. I know I know the truth. Mm -hmm. I said, we know. I said, we don't have to talk about this anymore. 
I said, just don't carry it anymore. God don't want you to carry it. He don't want me to carry my crap. Mm -hmm. I'm no better than you. You're a young, young mom, had three kids by the time she was 19, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I gave her grace and we had the best. Most. And I just lost my mom in Alzheimer's two years ago. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it was really sad during COVID and, mm -hmm. and, uh, I just praise God so much that we had a restored yeah. relationship. It was right. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing what he does when we give him, when we give him, when we give it over to him. Yeah. When we don't try to hang on to stuff, but let yeah. it go and look what happens. Like yeah. Beautiful things happen. Yeah. You know, uh, but we are not in control. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got to give that over. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. amazing. There was something I was going to ask you when you were talking about. Oh, the thing is, like, with your mom, you know, or with our parents or whoever raised us, we don't know what they were through. Yeah. Because people don't want to talk about yeah. their stories. Yeah. You know, and so they're they're living out of their pain. Yeah. You know, from their traumatic Absolutely. experiences yeah. as children. Mm -hmm. So to give her grace was was the yeah. kindest thing you could do. Yeah because we don't know, you know, yeah. what was happening in her life yeah. either. So, yeah, we need to remember that. Um, we all come from dysfunction, basically, yeah. because yeah, we're all right. dysfunctional. <laughs> um, yeah, so we don't have to be ashamed of that, <laughs> yeah. because we're all human, and we had yeah. human parents, people yeah. who make mistakes, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyone else? Good. That's great stuff that you got reunited with your mom, your son. Yeah. You can do a movie. So. <laughs> well, my son actually wrote a book. My first son. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And and how long has it been since you were? He found me Mother's Day, two thousand four. Okay. And then my granddaughter, I got the phone call to get her in Florida, and uh, August of two thousand four. So it was just a couple months. Yeah. And let me tell you, I was still being born to be wild. I'm still riding on the back of a Harley, <laughs> messed out of my head, <laughs> and hopping from bar to bar. When we got her, it was, I mean, I was... Well, you know, that was a but God moment yeah, there, you know, yeah, because that yeah. got you to think differently. It's never too late. I was older, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm going to be 67 in November. And I was in my 40s when all this started, and it was... It was not an overnight thing. It was it was a process. Mm -hmm. You were determined though, because I can remember seeing you at a store and you telling me your story about going down to Florida to get her, uh -huh. and you were very determined. And you said you were going to do it, and nothing was going to stop you. Yeah. Well, God used that. Yeah. God used her birth to yeah. you know wake you up yeah. and have a moment of clarity. Yeah. Hey. You know, I got to get this together. I think too. Part of that was like knowing I had abandoned my baby at the hospital mm -hmm. at 15 years old, and I never had any other second children. Chance. I just felt like it was a second mm -hmm. chance, mm -hmm. you know. And it really was for me. And so and she's just a beautiful kid. She's a great kid. Loves the Lord. And that's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> any comments or anything? It was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. You did a great job. All right. Did we have any comments or anything for her? Jen Brubaker, love you, Aunt Jody. We're proud of you for sharing your story and how God was with you through your entire life. Mm -hmm. Jen's, a, Jen's a friend of ours. <laughs> That's my niece. I know. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Tina, I'm not sure I'll say the last name. Thanks for sharing your story. It's awesome what God can do in someone's life. God bless you always. Oh, thank yeah. You. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Okay, so for all of you on Facebook, again, um, if you'd like to share your story, let me know. Um, because it's powerful and it encourages other people who are walking that path um, that there is hope. So, and that's what we all need. So, good night for tonight, and we'll see you back next Wednesday.